We have breaking news right now, and my heart just dropped into my stomach. Oh. Uh, from Gama Sutra, this is on Twitter. Report, The Walking Dead developer Telltale Games closing down. Telltale Games is closing their doors. Looks like they have closed down. I mean, I was in the middle of reviewing the final season of The Walking Dead. Right. I don't know. It's, it's kind of weird to think that I won't finish that. in a voice acting session with Melissa Hutchinson doing the voice of Clementine. And suddenly there's a company meeting called in an hour and no one knows why. We were about three hours in. Two of the writers, uh, Kent and Adam, were summoned to a mandatory meeting. And we were both like, okay, this is strange. What's going on? But didn't think too much of it. And sure enough, about an hour later, we were all in the same room and we were being told that the company was shutting down. Our journey was over. We had to be out of the building in a half an hour. Everything I saw from myself, my family, my team, was just gone in the blink of an eye. It has been four plus years since I have played a new Telltale game. Our last time we played was all the way back in September of 2018. Almost five years, guys. And it's an emotional, emotional day for me. Um, you know, when I got this opportunity, this came up. This was a full circle moment for me. So, if you guys hadn't been already keeping up to date, I was invited last month to play The Expanse, a Telltale series, episode one, early. And now today I can officially go through my impressions, what I thought of the game. I can show you footage of the game, I fortunately cannot show you my full walkthrough, uh, but I can show you some footage and go through what we can expect as the game right now is a confirmed July 27th release date for episode one with new episodes releasing every two weeks. So this has been an emotional journey for me. I just want to thank everybody. It's been almost a half a decade of just getting ready and waiting for this moment. Um, you know, this isn't, like I said, even if people think this is not, you know, the Wolf Among Us or the Walking Dead, it's still telltale and it still hits home to me that it's been hell. To be honest, to get to this point, we had to go through an entire pandemic to get to this day. So I'm so excited to share some footage of episode one of The Expanse. I played through the whole episode. Unfortunately, I cannot obviously show big, big spoilers and other stuff. But I can basically give you kind of a rundown of what to expect as we get into the game. Telltale slash Deck 9 have made a lot of improvements. This is the most explorative Telltale game and I mean that. It is the most explorative Telltale game we have seen to date. And I'll be talking about that and more in this video. If we can go for 2,000 likes on this, it's been a long time, guys. It's been a long, long time. So be sure to drop a like, subscribe if you're new, hit the notification bell so you must any of my videos covering Telltale games in the coming months as we get ready for The Expanse and The Wolf Among Us 2 next year. I don't usually show my face, but... For this, I have to. Thank you. I don't care if you've been here just recently or you've been here the last five years. Um, This was a day that may have never happened if it wasn't for you guys and my community that supports Telltale Games. They even said themselves when I met them that people like all of us here have, you know, we kept Telltale alive through our support. So I just want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's play! I've heard that before. This is the one. By the end of the day, all of us are gonna be fucking rich, but mostly you and me. It's another wreck. 
It's not just any wreck. The UNN Urshinabi. Dropped off the map less than a week ago. No distress call. Those UNN pricks never come out this far unless they're carrying something special. Aren't you one of those UNN pricks? <laughs> Easy. If I'm still one of those UNN pricks, then you're still an OPA traitor with Anderson Dawes' bounty on your head. But... The past is the past. What you see there is a prime example of the work Telltale and Deck Nine have done with the cutscenes and just the footage overall. It looks great, and I'm not gonna lie with you guys, compared to the beta alpha footage we got, the game looks incredible. And I was stunned when I got to play it first. We got to play it on PC, on Alienware computers. So yes, this was the highest quality present. Now, I believe with consoles, the game will run 60 FPS, and we'll still have about 1080p. I don't know if they're gonna have it. I'm pretty sure the next-gen console versions of the game will have extra benefits. Remember, the game is gonna release on Xbox One, Xbox Series X slash S, PS4, PS5, and PC via the Epic Game Store. Now, I know it is not releasing on Steam, at least at launch. They did tell me, though, it is very likely that it will come to Steam at some point in the near future after the game releases. Remember, it comes with five episodes. We are promised a bonus episode if you pre-order the Deluxe Edition. You get a bonus episode, and if you pre-order any edition, you get 24 hours early access to the game. Another thing you're going to notice straight off the bat is the choice wheel. It's no longer there. You don't get the four choices anymore. It's just one or the other. Usually one passive one or one aggressive one. Deck Nine kind of did this with true colors, so you can see why they're doing it. Yes. Now, I'll be asked a lot about gameplay. So here's some footage we have of the gameplay and how it works. So basically, you'll be able to walk around the world just like how you were in the old Walking Dead games, Wolf Among Us, the final season, Batman, and you're able to explore, read stuff, you know, get yourself immersed in the world. And one of the cooler things I found throughout this is that, yes, there's a lot of documents, notes, information about the world and it will just give you a greater richer understanding of what is going on yes this is not something that obviously i got into and was like oh wow i know everything that's going on like i would with the walking dead no this is the thing i had to pretty much look around you get to explore things yes sometimes you look at something more than once the audio will repeat which you know we're kind of used to at this point but the point is exploration has definitely been enhanced just like how I mean, it reminds me a lot of the walking dead season one because in season one you could pretty much explore examine a lot of things you know and that's really just the cool little telltale thing i missed that some of the older games didn't have you know the later telltale titles that you could explore and pretty much look through everything i've got an intact qpu here nice find In my honest opinion, one of the coolest things with the gameplay was the Zero-G. Just being able to turn, like, fly through the open area of the world, it was so freaking cool. You could literally, like, walk around on walls and stuff, turn your character, fly through, collect salvage. It was so freaking cool. It's probably one of the best parts of this game, no doubt, in my personal opinion. But as you can see here, I'm just walking through walls. I'm flying. You know, you get to just see, wow, this is just freaking neat. We get into the open area, open world of sorts. You get to fly through space. You get to fly through space. You get to examine this UNSB Urshanabi and the ships around it, the salvage, because what happened? You have to figure that out. And as you see here, I'm just flying through the open world and I get to see these beacons. So these, some of these beacons have some cool stuff. So I'll give you an example here. When I land here, it's a nav beacon. But guess what I find here? When you find these nav beacons, you usually can find maybe a little collectible or something. So 
as you see here, I'm looking for a laser crystal. Those blue markers identify side objectives. The yellow ones are the main. So as you can see here, I'm doing side objectives in typical down the bomb fashion. We're not even doing the main story. We are literally just looking around for stuff that maybe could be useful later in the story. And as you see here, lo and behold, she opens it up and there is my nav crystal. When she stomps on it here, boom, nav crystal. And I get my side mission complete. So exploration, doing stuff away from the main story will be rewarded in this game. And that's what I like to see with a lot of these games. You can make an impact just by doing this stuff. There's other examples you'll find throughout the story. I don't want to spoil. There's a couple other surprise ones in this episode. So I'll leave, I'll leave that quiet for now. But you'll figure it out. And we'll go through it when I play the episode next month. As you can see here, we have the settings and what you need to look through, you know, with this game. So for people that are curious, here are some of the gameplay options. You've got mouse and controller sensitivities. You've got the sprint, uh, PC controls. Again, this is on PC, so you're not going to have much variation there. Um, and as you can see, you got different symbols to represent the different, you know, options you have at your disposal. But as you can see here, I kind of just wanted to explore the settings and show you guys what you're going to expect with the game. Um, again, there's some accessibility settings, which I do like. You could set custom keybinds for the movements. You know, you've got all the opening action buttons, choices. Um, you got text, you know, the subtitles, the names. You got the graphics, you could put 1080p or lower all the way down to those settings. Borderless or window for that you got max frame rate you could put that on for pc again i think console is going to be 60 then you've got the medium high low cinematic graphics quality then you got advanced video settings where you can go through even more of those settings and i got all these video options you could change all those to max out the cinematic or not those are the advanced video ones you could change certain little itty bitty things like that and then the audio you know you can mute licensed music so that's a big thing like they did with the Life of Strange games. So that's a pretty big thing, if, especially if you're a streamer and don't want to get copyright. Then we got the extras. We got how to play, but the Telltale accounts are back. So look at that new cool little logo. It's so damn cool. They got Wolf 2, Batman, and Expanse on them. So woohoo! Around only this time, no dolls to keep you on the leash, yeah? Oh. Oh. This isn't oh. serious. On the ship, I'm the Exo. Shit. I was only fucking with you, Copang. Now, since I know I'll be asked about choices, there's not much I can say without spoiling, and I can't spoil, of course. But your choices will definitely have an impact as the game goes throughout. I don't know how much I can say yet. That's been revealed but when the game releases we'll discuss more about what that means basically just know that a lot of your choices are going to determine if some people make it or not just like a typical telltale game but they're trying to make choices matter more now which has been one of my complaints that i've had for a while with the series overall there's a lot more that you guys are going to be in store for choices will matter the exploration is awesome. There's a lot of collectibles you'll be getting and you can collect throughout. People's lives are going to be on the line. You're going to have to make tough choices. And this is definitely the most advanced Telltale game we've seen up to date in terms of the world, exploration, and all that. So, I know a lot of you guys, especially if you made it this far, are going to give this game a chance. I hope the general audience gives it a chance because I know how a lot of you guys are. And I talked to some people from Telltale about this. They understand, but give this game a chance. And hopefully what I've shown you here is a prime example of what we could expect. Obviously, I wish I could show more and go through the whole episode, but I'm limited as to what I could do with that. So overall, what would I rate the episode? I'd probably give it an eight out of 10 right now. And again, as I get a chance to replay it next month and see the final full version, I probably can give you guys a better acclamation with that but definitely this has taken the steps in the right direction what i want to see with new telltale but again as we get through the further episodes that'll give me more of an idea of what this new telltale is trying to accomplish overall and like i said that's only my pre pre rating as an eight so it could change could go higher could go lower 
we'll just have to see. But if you guys did enjoy this video, please be sure to drop a like, subscribe. If you have any questions about the game, be sure to leave them down below in the comments. As long as they're not spoiler related, I will answer them. And see you guys on July 27th for episode one. I have another couple special videos on the way. One is going to be an interview with one of the cast members. So stay tuned for that. Some very, very cool thing that I have in store. So thank you so much for watching and have a great day. If I had